What's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video on Lexa Lexus. Today I'm doing my Premier League predictions for week 20. It's been a while since I've been able to do Premier League predictions. I have been able to find some time tonight to go through some Premier League games as well. So as always, like with the Championship Prediction League, make sure you comment your predictions for the Premier League Prediction League as that will determine your position in the Premier League Prediction League. We're also going to show the updated standings of both of these leagues after this game week as well. So now's a really good time to see if you can get some points on the board as we've got some really big games. I've really got to be honest, these are some huge games that we've got to see this weekend. If you guys like what you see, please smash that like button. The like target, as you can see on the right, is 20 likes. The Premier League videos don't tend to do as well as the Championship ones. But I think 20 likes is a good target, so please hit the like button. It does tremendously help. Please hit the subscribe button if you've not done so. It really helps as well. We're nearly at 1,600. We are really trying to get 2,000 subscribers, as that is our goal and mission for this year. And you guys are doing an awesome job, so thank you guys. Please also share the channel too. All of those things really do help. But without any further ado, let's start predicting these weekend's games. Let's start off with Liverpool going up against Chelsea. Two of the supposed big six who I think are underperforming the most, really. Liverpool at the moment just don't seem to have that same level of work ethic. They don't have that same intensity when they try and win the ball anymore. Chelsea is just a mess, honestly. The transfer strategy is leaving me um, with a few doubts. We've signed a Mudrik for over £100 million and I'm like... Oh my gosh, I hope we've not wasted so much money there. To spend 600 million or at least close to that in six months for Bowley, I mean, I would really be wanting to see improvements if he's going to spend that much because if it's going to be on wasted players, then we are really using our resources um, to waste. So a lot of questions will be asked of Bowley if he cannot deliver the results as soon as he can and he doesn't have a clear plan. Honestly, with this game, I think both teams will be going in low on confidence, but I think Liverpool being at home with Anfield, they might sneak something here. As a prediction, I'm going to go for a 1-0 win for Liverpool. I've just got a bit more confidence that they'll sneak something here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Bournemouth versus Nottingham Forest. Now, this is a crucial game. You know, only two game weeks ago, Bournemouth looked quite a fair bit ahead of Nottingham Forest. But now all of a sudden, it's not a good for us having the upper hand in the Premier League table against Bournemouth right now. Because Bournemouth with a bad result here could find themselves in the bottom three. And the relegation battle this year is incredibly competitive. And these are the sorts of games that you really need to be picking up all three points in. But for Nottingham Forest, for the fact that they have now been able to get a winning streak, their longest winning streak this season, they are now going around in around the higher part of that mid-table position. And actually, if they keep on winning for the next couple of games, they are not far away, actually, from getting into the top 10. They find themselves 13th at the moment, which is a brilliant position for them to be, considering what position they found themselves. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Steve Cooper. And it seems Nottingham Forest are very close, or if not, I've already confirmed the signing of Chris Wood on loan from Newcastle. So they're getting deals in quickly as well, because Chris Wood, I don't think, is even their first signing of the January window either. Forest move very quickly, and I admire them for that. And for Bournemouth, they have not been able to win a game since Gary O'Neill was confirmed as a manager. And right now, that curse is just really feels like that. Bournemouth are really going to struggle to get out of it. As a prediction, I'm going to go 2-1 Nottingham Forest. I'm going to give Nottingham Forest their second away win, I believe that will be, of the season, if they do manage to pull this off. Let me know what you think about in the comments down below. Next game today is Leicester Brighton. Now, Leicester, I think, are one of the very few teams that have fallen victim to the World Cup break. Because Leicester's um, form was really improving, actually, um, just before the World Cup had started. But then they had this big break. And obviously, there was the drama of James Madison, fit or not fit. Turns out he didn't play in the World Cup due to a small injury that he did pick up in Leicester's last game before the World Cup even started. James Madison's not even featured. 
they're hopeful he'll be featured for this game. But this is a Brighton team who we got to really actually think about. Brighton are a good team now. They've got a good manager in De Zerbi, and I actually really admire the way he's picked up that entire squad and has actually managed to still get them getting unbelievable results with um, Graham Potter no longer managing Brighton. They are almost like 100% certain they're losing Trossard at this point. So it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to see a mass clear out for Brighton. And either way, it's going to be intriguing to see how well they could come from that. As a prediction, I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory to Brighton. Even if they have players unavailable, Casido has been linked with Chelsea very recently. Had a £55 million bid rejected. Casido could try and force himself out if he chooses not to play. But that's just really going to be the interesting part. You know, take a couple of key players out. Is it going to affect Brighton or is it not? My feeling is that they'll still kick on and I think they'll win by three goals to one against Leicester. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game today is Southampton Aston Villa. Another very important game near the bottom of the table, especially for Southampton's point. They picked up a crucial win um, last week against Everton, picking up a 2 1 victory. James Ward Prowse stealing the show within that game. They face a Villa team who have steadily improved and actually are 11th place and only three points behind Chelsea, may I add. So. Unai Emery has definitely got a positive response out of his Aston Villa side since coming in. You know, Aston Villa were within the relegation battle when Steven Gerrard was still in charge. He's now got some breathing space and if anything, if Aston Villa can still click on um, with that positive momentum of Emery, they could turn out to get great things. Southampton, I think, are always going to be underdogs. I think on the ball, they've just shown that they do have a lack of quality of it. Taking chances, I really need to see more from the likes of Che Adams to be a more clinical Premier League striker. I still don't have a lot of faith with Southampton with their resources. But as a prediction, I'm actually going to go for a 1-1 draw. I think it'll be a tight contest, but I think they'll draw a blank and they'll draw. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is West Ham Everton. So I was saying already how Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest was a crucial game. This is even more crucial than anything because it's 18th against 19th place. If any of them pick up three points, they go ahead of their rival by three points. They're both on 15 um, points respectively and are separated by only one goal difference, which is incredibly tight. It's really going to be a neck and neck game. West Ham look like that they've already completed the signing of Danny Ings, not 100% confirmed yet. But if they do get him signed by the time this video comes out, there could be a small possibility he could feature for West Ham this weekend. Although they have lost Craig Dawson, he has joined Wolverhampton Wanderers, which could prove to be a blow. I know he's not been particularly in their back line for every game for um, West Ham, um, especially this season, but that's still a big leader that they've lost to a, a relegation rival. So some very interesting decisions being made with West Ham and with Everton. I mean, they really right now need to try and turn around this toxicity that they've got at this moment. You know, the ownership is definitely under fire. Lampard's under fire with the media and the pressure as well. And I think right now, I think West Ham just got a bit more optimism. I've really got to be honest. I think both teams have not got a lot of it. But I think with West Ham making some moves in January in the transfer market, they might use that optimism to edge themselves here. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to West Ham, but I think it's going to be very, very tight. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Crystal Palace versus Newcastle. So, Crystal Palace are just below Aston Villa in 12th place currently in the Premier League. Newcastle, of course, they managed to win very, very recently, and it was a very late 1-0 winner against Fulham. Probably a bit fortunate, in fact, no, very fortunate to pick up all three points um, in that last game. Palace, I thought, were actually pretty good against Manchester United. You know, they got a draw out of it. They weren't good first half, but second half, they actually really made Manchester United, um, you know, be prepared, you know, for the wrath that they were going to have. And this was a Manchester United team that were plucking results constantly as well. So, Crystal Palace, on their day with their options, are a good team. And I do think this game is not going to be straightforward for Newcastle. They probably will be the favourites based on their incredible clean sheet record. And let's just remember that they've still only lost one game so far this season, which was that controversial VAR 2-1 defeat to Liverpool. And any other time, you know, Newcastle have not lost 12, I think 13 clean sheets that is now 
for Newcastle in the league in this stage of the season is absolutely insane. So I think this is going to be another clean sheet that Newcastle are going to get. And I think they might find one moment to take their chances. So as a prediction, I'm going to go for a 1-0 victory to Newcastle. But I do think it's going to be a good contest. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So from a game which I don't think will have many goals, Leeds Brentford on the other hand, I think we will see goals. And actually in the reverse fixture, we saw exactly that. I believe it was 5-2 Brentford actually last time we saw these two teams play against each other. And it was a very entertaining game. And I am expecting more of the same here. Brentford definitely having a bit more of an advantage where Leeds are at the moment. They're in the top half in 8th place actually in the table, which is an incredible achievement for Brentford to be. A lot of their players who needed to take a lot of time last season to adapt have completely adapted from game one. And since then, they really have been taking this season by storm. They're having an incredible season. Leeds can only, you know, dream of getting there because what Brentford are doing is probably what Leeds were doing within their first season in the Premier League. They're 14th at the moment, so they're not too badly in terms of their position. But with their points, they're only two points above West Ham and Everton, who are 18th and 19th place. So, wins got to really start coming for Leeds, otherwise they will sleepwalk themselves into that bottom three, and it could be a really tricky time for them to go back, especially at the halfway stage of the season now. As a prediction, I'm going to go for a 3-2 Brentford win. I think it's going to be a high goal-scoring game, but I think the Bees have got something a bit more about them with their attacking sense in the moment. So I'm going to go 3-2 Brentford. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Manchester City Wolverhampton Wanderers. So Manchester City yesterday survived a very late scare um, with Tottenham Hotspur. You know, they were 2-0 down at half time. And I was thinking they are almost gift wrapping that lead title to Arsenal already. But fair play to them. They did manage to find a comeback. They used their game in hand and have now closed the gap on five points and it really puts pressure on Arsenal to get something against Manchester United. But Wolves we cannot discount because Wolves have improved their form. They looked rooted at the bottom of the table. But Junior and Lopetegui since coming in has definitely got a bit more consistency about him. I'm still not too sure about the goals. That's the one thing with Wolves that they've still not quite cracked. They have really improved their defence which I'm really pleased for. But I do think their lack of goal scorers is going to be an issue. As a prediction, therefore, I'm going to go for a Manchester City 2-0 win. And I actually think this will be one of the more comfortable victories in quite a while. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is the big one. Arsenal, Manchester United. It's first versus third place. And this could be crucial. Considering the fact that Manchester City played for the fourth end as well, Manchester City could close the gap on Arsenal by two points going into this game. And that will be pressure on Arsenal. And Arsenal's only defeat so far this season was against Manchester United in the reverse fixture. And I actually think they were quite unlucky. I did a live stream for it and they were a little bit unlucky, especially um, in the first 50 or 60 minutes. And then what Manchester United did really well is that they managed to get chances from the counter-attack and since then Arsenal really didn't deal with it well at all. For Manchester United, they've got a bit of a midfield problem at the moment. You know, Fred picking up a lot of yellow cards. Casemiro picked up a yellow card against Crystal Palace, which means he can't play, which is the first team player in that position there. But also you've got the injury of uh, Donny van der Beek to deal with as well. So midfield options are looking a little bit light, especially from a defensive point of view. So that can definitely proved to be a weakness of Manchester United lacking that player playing the backbone of the team. Arsenal are still contending with injuries as well but they are still finding a way to get positive results and I have nothing but praise for Arsenal. They've been absolutely brilliant and I think a win here definitely reignites more confidence that you know Arsenal are no fluke and they will definitely go for this title. A win here puts them on 50 points already with 19 games in. And if you do like the statistics for that, that will be half of the games being played and Arsenal will be halfway to 100 points already. Could it be 100 point Arsenal? I don't think we will. I think Arsenal have got to be flawless um, to get to 100 points. But they definitely are amassing the points at a rate that a champion team would. So as a prediction, I think Arsenal will continue that, you know. I'm going to go 2-1 Arsenal. We could have a shock. Manchester United on their day can be anyone, but I think Arsenal will 
get the job done. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And now the final game to predict, ladies and gentlemen, is Fulham versus Spurs. It is a London derby. Fulham, of course, recently lost out against Newcastle and were very unlucky. Mitrovic missed two penalties. He technically scored one, but he double um, kicked it, so it wasn't going to be allowed. And then he missed the last one, unfortunately, for him. Spurs, they had a great first half against Manchester City, being 2-0 up, but completely threw it away, losing by four goals to two. And, of course, the game before that was against their North London rivals, Arsenal. And you'd expect Spurs to turn up more for what they did but they really did not it was a very disappointing below par performance from them and i think questions are going to be asked of conte very very soon transfers i think is a really big factor um that um can improve spurs this season but not in the level of underperforming of liverpool and chelsea for instance but it's still a team spurs that are underperforming by a big way and if fulham get a good result against spurs Fulham actually overtakes Spurs in the table. So that could be a good bit of motivation for Fulham going into this game. And they have typically been done really well. You know, they beat Chelsea and I saw the play and they are a really good team. Marco Silva has transformed the maturity and the organisation that I was seeing from Fulham this time last year in the Championship. It's really amazing to see, actually. As a prediction, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. I think Spurs are struggling with form and points. And I think Fulham can definitely throw something here. So I'm going to go 1-1. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So guys, that is my Premier League predictions done. I've actually got a Premier League predictions video out. I'm so proud of myself. If you guys enjoyed the video today, please smash the like button. As you see, the target is 20 likes. Let's see if we can get there as soon as we can. Please hit the subscribe button, which is also in the bottom right-hand corner here. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button as we're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. That really does help. And please also share the channel too. All these things really do help. That'll wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary. It's only in this video. And as always, I'll see you guys soon. And good luck with all of your predictions. Take care, everyone.